Hello out there, my name is Beautiful, Beautiful Nubia, and I would like to tell you a little story. It's about a man, a great artist, a mighty creative force whose story is often told but is yet to be fully told. Come along, let's go on a trip. <laughs> This is Buguma, a thriving riverine town in what is known today as River State of Nigeria. With an estimated population of 140,000, Buguma is in the heart of the oil and gas production belt of Nigeria. This is Calabari land and the language is still widely spoken alongside regular and pidgin English. The people here were mainly fishermen and many still make their living off the sea and the rich mangroves which are home to periwinkles, oysters and other shellfish. The ecological imbalance caused by oil exploration and drilling activities has led to a drastic reduction in these aquatic resources, thus throwing many in Buguma and surrounding areas into despair. Not much of the oil money gets to the common people of these parts, and the youth can sometimes vent their desperation in seemingly unpalatable ways. Still, these are very proud folks who have contributed immensely to the wealth of Nigeria in more ways than one. Important personalities have arisen from here, but the most famous of them all was neither a political leader nor a wealthy oil dealer. He was a man who through a combination of talent and hard work forced his way into the consciousness of Nigeria and the world. But up until early adulthood, he was simply the boy without a name. Today, music lovers all over the world know him as the Cardinal Rex Jim Lawson. Rex Jim Lawson was born in Buguma in 1938 to Jim Keo Lawson, a Calabari chief, and Awu, his young Igbo wife. Of Awu's previous six children, only one, a girl, survived beyond early infancy, and her husband had little hope that this newborn would go anywhere. He therefore declined to give the child any formal name reckoning that it was a waste of time, energy, and emotion to invest in a child who may not be there a few months down the line. Hence, the little boy was simply addressed as Erekosima, meaning not worthy of a name. These children, we are coming and going, we are coming and going. That was why the mother and the father could not give him a name. So when she asked the father, what was going to be his name? The father said, I cannot name this child, this man, this child has no name, we have no name. So that name became Ere Kosima, that is, don't give him a name. <laughs> don't give him a name. <laughs> that was the name he had until he now, because of this musical talent and movement and so, it was changed to Rex. He took the Rex from there. Yes, from there. <laughs> Ere Kosima. So now you do not do you not do it to Rex. Ere Kosima. Yes. There was something the mother told me. Ere Kosima means don't call him name. It's like you're born in Peking. You go die. They not tell that same Peking come again. So if they can't cut him to here. Now the mother take her, let her mouth tell me. Say that to Mark. Now you take Nuam for the third time or so. Say that this same picking they go, they come, go, they come. So he decided, say, don't call them name. Uh, if you call them name now, tomorrow you don't die again. Eric or Sema, that is a real language. Don't call him name. The little boy was placed in the care of Chief Willie James, a reverend at the Our Saviour's Church, by his mother. At school age in 1944, he was enrolled in the class of Reverend Bob Manuel, who later married his sister and played a big role in introducing him to Western music instruments. Not particularly outstanding in his schoolwork, young Eric Osima was very playful and gregarious, often getting into fights, one of which led to a long-term wound on one of his knees. It was this wound that made him less outgoing and focus his energy on music instead. At this time, he was already playing Komkoma music with his friends using homemade improvised instruments. In 1949, he left Buguma for Bakana 
to join Reverend Bob Manuel, who was by then married to his sister. He was enrolled at the Christ Army School, where his brother-in-law taught. His academic performance did not improve, but Bob Manuel soon introduced him to the cornet and then the trumpet. He was of the same parents with my mother. It was my mother who had to introduce him to my father. As at that time, when my father saw the talent in him, he started teaching him. As at that time, my father was the bandmaster of St. Saviour's School, now our Saviour's African Church. So as a bandmaster, I decided to teach the small Rex lesson, trumpet, trombone, saxophone, and all other instruments, maracas, and so on. Because when you get there, as at that time, they don't specialize on one instrument. They, they will teach you all the instruments. Then, later you can decide to excel on one, which Rex Lawson did. Eric Kosima had found his path and there could be no stopping him. He formed and played in several cultural groups employing local percussion song and dance. In 1953, aged only 15, he left Bakana to lead the brass band of Tumbia. This marked the beginning of his life as an itinerant musician. Myself and Rex Lawson we schooled together at Bakana CAC. Uh, but he was my senior at that time. We played music the same man taught us. So we played together from our youth before he left to become a professional uh, player. Myself so left school to, to become a professional player. Well, now there was a lady who owns an orchestra in Wari. They call that woman Mama Nelly. So she now named the hotel Nelly or uh, Hotel. Uh, it's a very popular woman in Wari those days. So Nelly they later named that band Nelly Orchestra. We were there playing. Rex came. So he called me. My friend, you play with the band? I say yes. Where is your band leader? I say, see him sitting there. He asked me, what is his name? I say, they call him John. He called me. He was the trumpeter and the band leader. He now went to the band leader. They spoke. He said he's a, a trumpeter. May he allow him, after the break period, he will come and do one or two songs. Then the man said, no problem. You are coming to assist me for my job. That is, I will have little rest. So we all laughed over it. Then he called the other two on me, you know, sang the song for them and then told them. So when we went back for second half, the man, the band leader now, made an announcement to the public that those that were drinking and dancing, that we have an artist that who he wants to feature. So please, they should bear with him. They say, no, let us hear him, let us hear him. So we are saying, ah, this small young boy, what in him goes, Abi? Not come play schoolboy music. I, I bet you, when Rex started, he was about 16 years old then. Yes, when he started, there was nobody who stood up to dance. Now they all stood up and walked direct to the stage. Because the sound of the, his idea was a new idea of which nobody expected that they would hear such sound and the voice. It changed the environment. So after two numbers, they now dropped the crowd, said, no, continue till we close. Or we go broke bottle low. We go broke bottle low. Now the band that's over, take off the stage. Among his many stops over the years, he worked as a greaser with the United Africa Company, USC, played with Uko's brass band in Uyo, and then onto the Cameroons in 1951. He was soon back in Nigeria though, Aba, Uyo, Calabar, Enugu, and then on to Lagos, where he worked with Chris Ajilo, one of the leading musicians of the time. Rex is a very calm guy whom I can talk to. In fact, when he first came into my band, 1955-6, I told him the first thing, you have to learn music. He was playing trumpet, but at a papa road here, I put him on. I think uh, he found it difficult with his talent 
to start learning music. That's why he had to leave. After that, that he went away, and um, the next thing I saw was coming back to Lagos with his band. Thereafter, he also worked with some other big names of the era, including Bobby Benson and Victor Laia. In 1958, he worked in Benin City, but soon got back on the road in 1959, spending some time in Akure, Kano, Lagos and Port Harcourt. Some semblance of order came into his career in the early 1960s when he recorded his first album, Inonicha, to good acceptance. By now, he was working with a regular group of young musicians and with them formed his Rex Lawson and the Mayors Dance Band, which was later changed to Majors after a legal tosu. The band soon moved to Port Harcourt for a period during which they blossomed and perfected their art. The death of his father brought Rex back home to Buguma for the first time in many years. He went with his band and made the people of Buguma very proud. He was playing regularly now at Maryland Hotel in Port Harcourt, which was owned by Mr. Odaja. And for once, he had what could be termed a permanent residence. But then he lost his beloved only sibling, his sister Daba, in 1964, and then met and married his wife Regina within a month of that sad event. By now, he was an emerging force on the high life scene, and each new recording established him as a master composer, a powerful singer, and a soulful trumpeter. His music had become popular across the country. And when he got the offer to move to Lagos and play permanently there, it was just right. When we were with Udaja, we now use this name to make a record. Udaja, Ababakumbariye, Ababaki Priyo, the meaning of that record means a lot, but Udaja never understood what Rex was telling him. Udaja, I want so so so. I need money or give me zinc. Because anytime the rain falls, the zinc is leaky. So give me money. Let me patch my house. Or I will move I will move a Yemuba telling him but the man doesn't understand the language. Within that period, it was when Chief Oswala came from Lagos the owner of the Central Hotel Yaba. He now bought car for X, bought Vespa for with the players. His Lagos base was the popular Yaba Central Hotel owned by Chief Oswala. And from there, he made incursions into other parts of Lagos, the Southwest and the rest of Nigeria. Many fans still recall watching his unforgettable performances at venues such as the Yaba College of Technology, Kakadu Nightclub and Crystal Garden Hotel in Yaba where he relocated after acquiring his own equipment and securing independence from Chief Oswala. Unlike so many uh, musicians of his time, Rex Lawson was the most original in terms of composition, where others were copying Ghana, picking their things left, right and center. Rex Lawson was extremely original and was a very powerful uh, singer and trumpeter I remember those days at um, Central Hotel, uh, not far from Kakadu, when Red Blossom was playing. He would be there sitting down, drinking. He, he drinks well, as a matter of fact. And um, we, 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 we would take him to the, to the stage, uh, almost fully drunk. But by the time he gets there, Red Blossom can play for six hours non-stop, crying at times. It's his music was very, very spiritual. Rex Glossing was very, very powerful. Uh, he used to, he had a club in uh, Yama yeah, in 65. Okay. He was playing at uh, Central Hotel. Central Hotel, yes. He had a, in, um, a club owned by uh, one, he, an Igbo man called Oswala. Uh, so he was, we used to check him out uh, in 65. And we went there to, to, to listen to him. Because he was, uh, he was different. I knew he was going to go far. Because he's an active guy, you know. But uh, he could be a shy guy. He's very humble. And he could tell you his mind. And he could be very straightforward and disciplined. That's one thing I like about him. On the stage, he's a character you need to watch. He's a performer. 
This was 1966. It was at the peak of his powers. And the way creative sounds and new songs came out of him confirmed his genius and star quality. He released each album after each album. And his songs were the staple of public radio and social events. He sang in a variety of languages, including Calabari, Igbo, Efik, and Yoruba. He became the toast of the Lagos high life scene and the target of envy for many local musicians. Times were so good, he could actually boast of having the best musicians playing with him, as he did in this rare Voice of America radio interview. Today I have with me one of the leading high life band leaders in Nigeria, Cardinal Rex Jim Lawson. He is 28 years of age. Cardinal Rex Jim Lawson comes from the Calabari area in the eastern part of Nigeria. He is now based in Lagos, playing in one of the leading hotels. Cardinal Rex Jim Lawson, is this your real name or is it a stage name? This is my real name, exception of the Cardinal, which is a title. I see. How did you come about this title? It's a title given to me by my fans because of the way and manner I compose my music and everything. Could you tell us the history of your band? Well, uh, the band uh, is the leading band now in Nigeria as far as West African rhythm is concerned. And I think uh, the band is doing well and we hope to do so till uh, any time, I tell you. I'm, I'm sure there is no other band that can throw us off the field just now. Well, uh, my plan is to keep on entertaining people. I will die a musician. The uniqueness he had for me, you know, the fact that uh, his band was always perfectly in tune, hmm. and this is and Fela himself always said it. I mean, the band, the, the man that kept his band perfectly in tune all the time was Rex Lawson. And uh, what did he not have? He had uh, the, the, the harmonic progressions. He had, rhythmic progressions, and had everything to be a better high-life musician. The music has wonderful lyrics. You doesn't need to understand the language, but Resident Lawson was a very wonderful singer. Sings with emotion, with passion, with feelings, and all of that. It's very unique, his singing and his style, and it's very original, very original. We made money on tour. At times we go three months tour. Who organized these tours? Well, it was Rex. He decided we cannot stay in Central Hotel Yaba. He decided that we should plan a tour. Let us face not. We now went to Northern Region. Year by year, our road manager, um, we now send him, go with posters, they arrange hotels. Even the hotel managers, they used to give them free room, free beer, free food so that let it be in their hotel that Rex will play because it's a crowd full of them. Wherever we go, no band to play, they must stop because no customer will go there. So far we are in town. We both were recording for the same company, Philips. You know, Philips Record. We were recording for the same company and uh, when you hear my music, I hear his music, you know, we always say, ah, I wish we meet you. We, so somehow we were able to meet at uh, uh, Philip's uh, studio because sometimes I might be recording. I mean, it might be just coming out from the studio and my job is just going in. And so we, been, been, we were great friends because uh, um, any band that I was playing, Independence Hotel, that club was a big club, very mighty club. and, and uh, you know, uh, Rex Lawson always come when he's passing through on the tour. He will stop at the bar. When he stop, it's my club. He will come to my club. We play together. We we'll pack the house, play till morning. Where well, they be selling daily times by six o'clock. We are great time. His ascendancy in the music world was altered by the Nigerian Civil War, which started in July 1967. He was forced to return to Port Harcourt. Things were changing quickly. The vibrant nightlife of Port Harcourt had begun to suffer from the curfew imposed by the government. And in the uncertainties and vagaries of war, the last thing people wanted was to go and dance in a club. The music business was hit hard and the musicians faced very tough times. 
he renamed the band the Biafra Republican Band. But this did little to change his fortunes. Deep tensions developed amongst band members. The friction led to a breakdown in trust and communication and the eventual fragmentation of the hitherto compact band of brothers. My father cannot eat without his voice, you know, his band voice. I know, that I know, even at, at the age of five, I used to see them. You know, anytime they go out to play, when they come back, my mother cooks and he will not eat alone, that he will not do alone. He will want every one of them to come to table with him. Yes, even if, if it's not only my mother that cooks, so they are wives too, the band men, they are wives too, also cook. And when they cook, they bring it to my father's table. So my father eats with them too. It, it's like turn by turn. Your wife cook, my wife cook, your wife cook, where they eat it together. So, you know, the spirit of oneness is always there with them. We live like one father, one mother. We don't eat separately. The wife, when she wants to put soup here in a basin, we won't make garlic in a basin. Rex will order the wife carry the food to the social room, the social player's room. My people, they don't, I don't begin it all. What she says, everybody sit on the floor. Mm. Yeah? At times, when I see, say, oh, your hand strong past my own for feeding, me, I go carry the soup run. Then you say, carry Gary run. Then later we we'll settle, we'll come back to eat. This is how we eat. Then as we eat, my wife won't don't, don't, they bring up. That's how we eat. If the women want to go to market, the driver will wait for all of them carry them to market, he will sit down there till after everybody buy everything that they want to buy, they now come back to the vehicle, enter, drive back to home. We lived happily. We don't have any argument because he respects me and he, I respect him. He, he gives me the, the, the respect because when he's, when he's not there, I take over the, the stage and he respect me as he knows that I'm the uh, I'm a good trumpeter, and he doesn't argue with that. Anything about trumpet, he will say me. I should take over, but uh, for voice, it, it's, it's too much uh, for me. So that's why we we act as a brother, and too much. We are too close. Uh, we are too close. If he, if he offends you, he will will just love over it, uh, love over it. But when we are, we come together, we eat together, we drink during drinking time, we talk over it, we laugh over it, and make a fun, funny things out of it. So that's it, the life we pass. We don't have anything grudge till the uh, kingdom come. No. At the height of the war and with the capitulation of Port Harcourt to federal forces, Rex relocated to Buguma with his family and some members of his band. To put food on the table, he tried his hands at fishing and salt extraction. It was the most harrowing period of his adult life. At the end of the Civil War, he reunited with most of his band and continued from where he had left off. In July 1970, he embarked on a tour of the United Kingdom organized by the Jaw Students Union. It was a chaotic and commercially unsuccessful tour, but he did return to Nigeria with a brand new album of eight songs titled Rex Lawson, The High Life King in London. He paid a visit to his mother in Buguma shortly upon his return. This was the last time mother and child would see each other alive. As Nigeria limped into the new year, Rex Lawson set his mind upon securing some steady work for his band and financial stability for his family who were all now resident in Port Harcourt. It was a time for rebuilding and re-strategizing, but he had no idea how limited it was. He signed a deal to work as the resident band at Zina Nightclub in Worry and secured a loan to buy a bus for the band, hoping the vehicle would be ready for the trip to Worry for opening night on January 16, 1971. He sent his boys ahead on the 15th and planned to join them on the bandstand at 10 p.m. the next night. Now, having failed to take possession of the new vehicle due to uncompleted paperwork, he rented a bus to take him and the few men who were still with him to worry late on the 16th. He never made it. He died in a horrific accident at Uronigbe on the Agbo Wari Road that night. He was 32 years old and survived by his mother, wife, seven young 
biological children and three foster children. You always stay on the stage. Gentlemen, I'm just here with you people. I will not stay long, though. I will soon leave you people. He said, Ta, stop that nonsense. He said, I'm telling you people. Not until we're going to worry. It happened January 16, 1971. We just came back from London Tour. Not quite two weeks, we were going to worry. At Oronit Bay, it happened. In Veku, the wind stream entered his head four inches. His own head. That was what killed Rex. And the distance from Oronit Bay to a cool hospital is more than here to Aba. So imagine the distance. The bleeding was too much. Ah, it was sad because uh, by the time uh, we heard, in fact, we, we too were going to Midwest by that time. And so we passed through where the accident happened. It was the, the driver drove into a tree. That was, that was, the, the, that was the accident. Like, it was, it was too much. We, 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 we were all unhappy. The rest in the, the name, live forever. I don't really know him as a child. But then, I used to hear people talk about him, you know, that he's a nice man, he was kind to people, very friendly. So that's all I know about him. And my mom used to tell me about him, that he's a loving husband to her. So I don't really know him as a dad, because he died when we were kids. I would say it is not come to accumulate wealth. That is, this is what I have, let me give it to the people and leave this world. He passed a good life, which we should emulate. I have not seen any person who had said Rex Lawson was bad. In about one decade of recording, he released more than 100 original compositions, many of which were massive hits covered by other musicians around the world, including young Afropop artists and major voices such as Ebenezer Obey and the late Orlando Owo. One can only wonder what more he could have achieved had he lived longer? Well, that thing that is, is his music. His music is uh, it's always sounds fresh. I mean, each time he played, it sounds fresh. The music is still relevant. In fact, it's beyond the sales. Uh, those who perform his works, you know, uh, are, are, are numerous. I mean, you go to nightclubs, go to places, and everybody's playing some of his work. And it's actually even. I'm surprised it's, it seems to be even more relevant beyond the shores of Nigeria. The artists who have died, you know, well, the music lives beyond them. And when it lives beyond them, it means that what they have created, you know, is enduring. His songs are songs that can tell us to do something. Do this or don't do that. These are type of the type of songs he sings. He sang before he died. Look at his instrumentation. Forget the, forget his, him singing, but look at the instrumentation. The instrument there can tell you that this man could compose songs at, at spiritually beyond the physical. That is what I think the legacies he left behind, which we should emulate. So here lies the great Rex Lawson. King of I life. Here in this humble grave. Well, here he lies now, quiet in his birthplace, Buguma. Here lie his mortal remains. He who was not worthy of a name at birth as a name now, a rather large one. My name is Beautiful. Thank you for watching. And so of all your dad's songs, which one will you say is your favorite? That's my best song, my favorite.